What are the challenges that executives have in today's world, you know, especially with all the stuff that's happened since 2020? Oh, you know, here, here's the one that I think is the biggest challenge. Uh, there's a couple, but I, I want to start with what I think is the biggest challenge is we haven't evolved um, our leadership approach. I think we're in a fundamentally different form of leadership than we've ever been in the past. I want to start with like where, when I began my leadership career and I went to my very first management training class, the instructor said like, your job as a leader is to provide a vision and then to take people to a better place. And he stood up on a chair, like literally stood up on a chair and he like reached over and extended his hand. And he's like, your job as a leader is to extend the hand of greatness and to grab people by the hand and take them to a better place. And I'm like, well, that sounds inspiring, but like something sounds wrong about that to me. And now I think I understand why, because right now leaders aren't asking people to come with them to a better place, a vision that they have of the future. See, when you're working in total uncertainty and ambiguity, you as a leader aren't like taking people to a land you've been to before. Like, oh, come with me. I know this country. I'm an expert, but come with me and I will guide you there. This is, you know what? I'm going to wake you up in the middle of night, rouse you from your sleep, tell you to grab your go bag and come with me because we've got to leave what we're doing today. And we've got to reinvent and rethink and build something new. Well, where are we going? I don't know but I know we need to leave. So what leaders are, the challenge I think today is leaders are leading in the dark. Mm. And when you lead in the dark, it's a very different kind of leadership. You're not asking people to follow your vision as much as you're saying, come with me in the dark and keep your eyes open and we will figure this out together. You've got to build the trust that you need for people to follow you into an unknown and uncomfortable place. And then you need collective vision. You need, I I think of it like special ops Mm. where it's like, okay, you know what, we're going in on this mission and we, we know what we're trying to do, but we don't have all the information we need. So we need people saying, I got eyes on this. I see this, this is happening over here. And the leader is coordinating that through a headset. And you're building collective vision. It's it's such a different form of leadership, and I think it's the biggest challenge right now. Is a lot of people say, "I don't have the answer. I don't have the answer." So it's it's helping to navigate a team through this uncertainty. And is there like almost a lack of vision because of the uncertainty? So it's not like very kind of easy to set a vision, but in the current environment, is that part of the challenge, or is it they should be setting a vision? within the current environment to help everyone go, that's the path. Well, I I think it is actually both of these. It is a lack of vision. Like you may have an intent, an objective, but I don't know that you can have this vision because it's going to unfold and it's going to be created. So it's about getting a team to build a real-time vision of reality, a real-time vision of what we're creating. And I actually think, um, you know, all the research I've done has led me to this sort of strange conclusion is that we tend to be at our best when we don't know. We tend to be at our best when we don't know. That's not true for everybody though, is it? That's true for some people, right? So for example, like like a bit um, later in this conversation, we're going to be talking about impact players, right? And that's like the characteristics of one that they seem to, you know, to step into kind of uncertainty or they handle uncertainty, like in a bit of a different way. Is that consistent across everyone or is that consistent across the best um, teams? Like, like, how would you define that? Well, I think there is a general dynamic is that we generally tend to do better thinking and better work when we don't have answers because of what it does to us. It, when you have an answer, bam, you ask me a question, I have an answer. You ask me any related question, I have an answer. You get halfway through your question, I have an answer for it. And we are so quick to assume, but when we don't know, and I'm not talking when we're like empty headed, no nothings. I mean, when we are fully engaged and thoughtful Mm -hmm. and we don't have a ready answer. Well, what do we tend to do when we don't, we have a question, but we don't have an answer. Well, we think we Um, make mistakes. We learn from them. We're humble. We ask a lot of questions. 
we feel uncomfortable. Like we feel tension when we don't know. Mm. And most of us don't like staying in a not knowing space. So we're very driven to, we tend to do our best when we don't know because we don't like it. And we have to close the gap. So like generally, I think this dynamic plays out when you look at leaders, when leaders have the answer, their team becomes an extension of them. Here's what I want you to do. Your arms, your legs, I'll be the brain. And they can end up having this diminishing effect on others. But when leaders have the right question, but don't have the answer, well, then they need to ask questions. Then they need to listen to people. Then they need other people. And Mm -hmm. we, we love working for people who need us. It lets their team find the answer. So it tends to put leaders in their best space and it tends to create learners out of us when we don't have ready answers. 